Hello, Holy Wiremod here. Welcome to tutorial 14 in the GLUA Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at Metatable inheritance as well as default values. So let's start by defining a window, which we're going to have as a table, and we're going to have a prototype window. So this is what we're going to be inheriting from. So a table will have an X position, it'll have a Y position, and this table window is going to have a default width as well as height. So this is some VGUI parameters typically that we'd be dealing with in this example. And we'll get into VGUI, the course, later in the series. And let's define our meta table, which should be familiar to you from the last tutorial. And we're going to have a function, and this is going to create a new window, which is going to have the input of table or argument table. And it's automatically going to assign a meta table to it. So we're going to have table, and then we're going to have window meta table which we're going to be assigning we can also return that table if need be okay so let's then set up the meta method so the meta method we're using here is called index and we're going to have two arguments we're going to have table and we'll have key as well so we're going to simply return window prototype and then we're going to have key. So we're going to be accessing from this table the key value which doesn't exist when we actually create a new window and I'll show you that in just a moment. So right here we have window new so we're calling that function that we have above and our arguments are going to simply be x is 10, y is going to be 15 and let's print table w and see what we get as a result. Well you see there's no with and no height. However, what's nice about inheritance is that we can actually access these values. So let's say I want to get the width. Well, there we go. We have a width. And what's going on for those who are confused is we have this table, which we're inputting to this function, has an x and a y. We're assigning the meta table. Well, we called index meta method here, which assigns from the prototype table width in this case because that is the current key value which we're calling. Likewise with height. So you see we also get 100 there. In fact, I'm going to change this to 50 just so you can see the change. It's more obvious. So that's the process of inheritance, that you have some base table and you're pretty much transferring data over from here to the other table as such. Now also, instead of using a function, you can also use a table. You can just use window and then we can say prototype directly. And that will yield the same results. As you can see, we can get the height, we can get the width, and everything's fine there. So the importance of you knowing this, as I promised in the last two tutorials, is that I would then explain what package see all actually is. So with package see all, it pretty much sets a meta table for the current module, which is this module right here, with its index meta method field referring to the global environment. So the global environment, for those who are unfamiliar, if you go to the wiki, that's going to be all these commands right here. So you can actually uh, access the global environment via your code. So let's do that. We're going to go and make a quick loop. So we're going to say for n in pairs underscore g do print and we'll say n and just like that so there we go there's all of our global variables in the global environment so what that's doing then is setting all these variables in the global environment to be inherited onto the module so now the module pretty much has access to all these uh, global variables which is really nice so that's what package c all does for those who are confused about that and i hope that's very clear and one more thing before we conclude this video is I want to show you an, another thing you can actually do with the meta tables and meta methods. So let's clear all this out and let's set a value. We're going to have function and we're going to set some default values. So we're going to call this set default and we'll have table, we'll have value as such. And let's create a local meta table and we're going to have the meta method index function return value end and then we're going to set meta table to the table that we have right there 
and using this meta table as such. Okay, so let's say we have some table, and again, we have x equals 10, y is equal to 15, and then let's print table.x and let's print table.z. Okay, so as you can see, we have this equal to 10 as such. However, this does not equal anything, it equals nil. Now, when we actually call the function set default, we can, when applying the meta table, set the default value to zero. So if it's not defined, it is zero. And then again, let's just copy and paste this. And there we go. So now you can see all undefined values. So we can put table.soup. There you go, that's zero too. And all the undefined values are simply set to zero or whatever we put here. Heck, we can make this any data type as well. That's fine too. So that covers the usefulness of meta tables. I hope it really explains everything. There's a bunch more you can do. However, this is the basic premise which we need to go into the next topics covered in the next video, which will be taking a look at object-oriented programming. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, if you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and any questions, put in the comment section below, bell, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.